You might hear a lot of different advice out there about what you should be doing when it comes to your branding and it might get confusing because the problem is that every business is different and so everyone is at a different stage, has different needs and what you need to be working on in your branding might actually be different from someone else. So in today's video, I want to talk about the different stages of the branding journey so that you can work out what stage you're at, what it is that you need to be working on and getting better at so that you can continue to grow your brand rather than listening to all this different advice and thinking, oh, I'm supposed to be doing this or I'm meant to be working on that, but knowing what stage are you actually at and what do you need to be focusing on right now so you can continue to grow that brand. <music> I'm Tabitha Emma and I'm a brand designer and educator and today we're going to dive deep into the branding journey because not everyone is at the same stage. Not everyone right now needs to go out and hire a designer and get a full branding suite created. You might not be ready for that and it might actually end up being the wrong move and a waste of time and money because you weren't ready, it ends up not being the right thing and then you've wasted all this money and resources on creating something that you end up realizing isn't right for you. And so it's really important to know what stage you're at and what you should be working on now so that you're focusing on the right thing and you can slowly build up that branding. It's also important to note that everyone is going to go through this journey at a different rate. Some people might speed through this journey and get to those final stages of branding a lot faster than someone else. It really depends on each individual business, how it's growing, what it's doing, what you're working on, how long you've been in business, how much experience you've had before, how strong of a vision you have for what you're actually creating or whether you're just testing the waters as you go. It's really important to assess your own brand journey and what you need to individually be working on and not just listen to people say you have to do this because everyone is different. So step one of the branding journey is getting that business name sorted out, knowing exactly what you're actually going to call this brand, knowing initially what it is that you're going to be offering and who to, and then starting off with some simple branding. Now this could be just getting a logo in place, picking out some fonts and some colors and just getting it up there and getting it going. Now some people might skip this stage if they've got to another stage sooner. So I'll first talk through all these stages and as we go I'll talk about how you might need to skip some stages or speed through some stages faster depending on your own circumstance. So step one is really important if you've got this idea but you haven't done all this huge amount of market research, you don't have any you know huge amounts of experience behind you, you know you haven't been in business before and you know learned a lot about what you want to do and creating this new thing now but if you're just starting from scratch and you want to test the waters, see how things go. You don't want to be investing heaps of money and time into creating this amazing brand because things might change. As you get going, you might realize that what you're offering isn't really working out or the people that you thought you wanted to work with aren't actually the people you want to work with. As you start diving deeper into your brand foundations and getting to know things, you might realize that you actually want to change things up a lot. So it's really important at this stage to just keep things simple. You can still make your branding look really nice by picking out high quality fonts, keeping just maybe a very simple logo mark, not using anything too over the top or fancy but keeping it simple and basic but elegant and well designed so that you can just get out there, start testing the waters and start seeing how people respond to what you're creating. So this is really great if you don't have a lot of time and money to invest in doing all this market research and if you don't have a huge amount of experience behind you because you can learn as you go. And so you're sort of starting with some basic branding and then learning as you go, starting to discover as you start to do work, start to put things out there, what it is you like, what it is that is working, how you're connecting with certain people, what people you find you're enjoying working with, what sort of work that you find you're enjoying the most. And if you're doing products, what products are people People responding too well. All those things are part of on the ground testing. So rather than doing market research, you're testing on the ground as you go. And so it's important to just keep things simple, not put so much time, effort and money into your branding at this stage, but keeping it simple but well designed. So the next step is as you begin to grow. So you're starting to grow things, things are starting to take off a bit for you, but you're not quite ready to outsource just yet. You haven't quite built up the business to a point where you can invest a lot of money in outsourcing a lot of things. And so at this point, what you 
you want to be doing is starting to educate yourself a bit more on design so that you're able to put your best foot forward when it comes to your graphics and your branding. So that initial branding you did in stage one, you might just want to make some little tweaks to it as you learn a little bit more about design. And also you're going to be wanting to do your own graphic design work in terms of creating social media posts and graphics and things that you're putting stuff out there. So depending on what you do, whether that's putting out flyers or pamphlets or um, creating postcards or business cards, or it's creating those Instagram posts, Pinterest pins, all those things, depending on your own business, whatever it is, you're going to constantly need to be creating graphics. And if you can't afford to outsource that yet because you're growing but still in those early stages, you want to start to improve your design skills so you can start to up level that and start to really build that brand identity. So this just means starting to educate yourself a little bit on design, learning some design basics so that you can improve. You don't need to invest huge amounts of time and money into this, but just starting to learn some more design basics just to improve things and take things up a notch. So step three then is really getting a hang of DIY graphics. You've started to spend a little bit of time learning, maybe watching a few YouTube videos, maybe taking a short course on design. You know, there's a lot of different options for how you can learn, whatever suits you best, whether it's reading design books or watching some videos or taking a short course where someone guides you through something that's just going to get you in that flow you're going to start to improve and you start to feel more confident in what you're creating and it's going to help grow your business because you're starting to be able to put your best foot forward you're starting to create a more consistent style and you're putting out quality graphics and so it's helping to build up your now, brand. Now step four is a rather important step and this is where we start to get more clear on our brand foundation. So in those first three steps, what we were doing was just starting to get the hang of things, learning what we like, learning what we want to create in this brand, you know, making mistakes, working out who we like to work with, what we would like to create, what's working, what isn't. We're learning a lot of things on the job and as we go. And so we're improving our skills as we're working on that and we're getting clearer and clearer on what we want to build. So step four is getting really clear on those brand foundations. So you've spent that time, you know, figuring it all out and now you want to really sit down and get super clear on what your brand is that you want to be creating. So those brand foundations include getting really clear on what it is that you're offering, what your niche is, what your focus is, who is it even for and you know making sure that you're speaking really clearly and getting really clear on who that person is that you're trying to attract. And things like your brand story, your brand values, brand's mission and purpose, your voice, you're really starting to get clear on all those things and what it is that you're really trying to create with this brand. Now, when I said that some brands are going to go through this process faster than others, some people, if they've got a lot of business experience behind them and are starting just a new project, a new business, but they already had businesses in the past, they might get to this stage for a lot faster because they might, from other experiences, realize what it is that they want to be creating and building. Or they might have greater finances behind them so they were able to do market research without having to test on the ground but rather invest time and money into some proper research and so they're able to skip forward to that step four a lot faster and get to those brand foundations and figure out what it is that they want to be creating with this business. So once you've got past stage four that's when you might be feeling a little bit more ready to outsource. Now depending on how much your business has grown it could be that you want to completely outsource everything and hire a brand designer and get them to do it all for you or you might just want to hire out the areas that you're struggling with more so you might want to hire out someone to create the base branding but you still want to take on the other graphics or other elements yourself so depending on how you're feeling about your own design skills or whether you want to continue learning about design and get better and do it yourself or if you feel like I've just got to hand this over to someone else because DIY's only got me so far, it's time to give it to a professional. So depending on your own circumstances, your own abilities and skills and knowledge, you'll then decide, now what am I gonna to do to take those brand foundations and up level my brand identity? So then step five is finding someone that's the perfect fit. So whether that's finding someone that's the perfect fit to teach you how to do this yourself if you really wanna take it on yourself, or finding that perfect fit designer that's really going to take on your vision and create that visual identity and that 
brand identity that you want to be creating. There's plenty of designers out there and it's really important to find someone that feels like the right fit for you. Someone that you feel like you can get along with well, someone that you feel will understand your vision. Maybe they've had past experience with working with clients that are a similar industry to you or they've created designs that you feel is very similar to the kind of feeling or vibe you want to be creating. Time to do your research and find someone that you feel that you trust and feel is going to really execute on what you want to be creating. And once you've got that brand identity in place, step seven is really getting comfortable in it, really starting to get to know it, learning how to be really consistent in it and cohesive in it because every touch point matters. It includes things like how you write, the kind of music you're picking, the kind of imagery and you know if you're using stock photos, picking the images that are actually going to suit your branding or if you're going to hire a photographer, making sure that they know how to you know, put that brand vision into those images as well. So making sure that everything is really cohesive and really starting to get comfortable in that brand identity you've created, really getting to know it really well so that everything across the board, every single touch point, everything you put out there has that consistent brand identity and feel. And it may take time initially just to really get comfortable in it. Depending on how much you hired out, you may make a few mistakes at the start, maybe use things that weren't quite on brand, but it's taking that time to really get comfortable and really get to know it and get more and more consistent and really build up that strong band identity that's going to be really memorable and recognizable to your audience. And the final step, once you've got really comfortable in that branding, it's a really strong brand identity, is then creating sub-brands. So sub-brands are little mini brands. So if you've got particular products or services or something where you want to create its own little sub mini brand within your umbrella parent brand, then this is now the time to start doing that. You feel like you've established this really strong parent brand, so now you can more comfortably create some sub brands. So if you've got a product that you really want to brand on its own, you might want to create a separate logo for this product, maybe have some variations on some of the colors or fonts or whatever it is, making sure that it still ties in with that parent brand, but it has its own little identity to itself too. So this could be a product or a special service. It could be a signature offer of yours. It could be something new and exciting that you want to put out there and you want to create a bit of a brand identity for that. Or it could be a range of things. You might have a range of different products or offers and you want to create a range of different sub brands. It's important with this that it does tie in with that parent brand, that it's not too far different. It may be that it crosses over with the colors. Maybe it just takes a section of the color palette or it still keeps some of the fonts, but you just have a new logo, maybe some new graphic elements or some illustrations that go with it. Basically making sure that there's something about it that ties in, making sure that the tone and feel and you know, all those brand foundations that came from your parent brand are all carrying over into this sub brand as well so that it definitely ties in and people can see that it's part of it. Think of it like, you know, you've got the parent brand and you've got a child brand. So it's still got that DNA from that parent brand. There's still a lot of similarities. There's just a few things that are a little bit different. And so really that's the that final stage once you've got everything else going really smoothly is you can start to branch out and create these sub brands. So I hope that got you thinking about what you need to be working on next, what stage of the branding journey you're on and what's going to be important to you. And don't feel this pressure if you have to rush through it, you need to be at that final stages or you know this stage I've been stuck at for years. Every business is different. We all have different circumstances, different things that we're creating, um, you know, different resources behind us. Some people have a lot more resources behind them so they can speed through this faster or a lot more experience. And so they're able to create a new brand a lot quicker. So it really depends on your own circumstances and don't feel like it has to be at this particular time frame. It's whatever works for your business. And over time, you might have to return. You might have to go back a few steps. If things change or you need to pivot, you might have to go back to those brand foundations and start again. So this isn't a linear journey of it just ends and that's it. There might be times that you have to return to certain stages as well. So I hope this helped you. I hope it got you thinking. And if you'd like to learn more about branding, graphic design and creativity, then be sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time.